to say uh, it, but it makes me want to say, good grief. Good grief. Good grief. And that's exactly that's what right. we're going to talk about today yes. here on Strategies. Welcome, folks. Thank you for tuning in to the television version of Strategies for a Living. I am marriage and family therapist David McMillan, and I'm joined by one of my very favorite people. Uh, you may or may not know Dr. Ernie Calger. Uh, I tell you, he's probably uh, helped a lot of people that have helped you because for years and years and years, he was a professor of counseling at Louisiana Tech University uh, on the Barksdale campus, now no, retired. That's right. And uh, welcome, welcome back to Thank Strategies you. for Living. You've hung out here with uh, me no. quite a bit through the years. That's and, been uh, nice. Yeah, so good grief. We that's are going right. to talk about that today. We can say that again, can't we? Yeah, we can say that again. Yeah. You know, we usually think of grief, Ernie, as something big right well and bad B big and bad yeah, yeah. big losses uh, loss of a parent uh loss of a spouse uh -huh. uh, for goodness sakes i don't want to even think about the loss of a child um, but we usually think when we when we hear the term grief you're exactly right we think it's big and bad but what if we talk a little bit today about what good grief is and, and and let me let me tell you what i mean by that um i don't think that we realize how much in a normal life we need to be adept we need to learn to grieve and grieve well and um, sometimes just daily. Ab, 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 sometimes <laughs> hourly. Hourly. And, and the reason I say that is because, and I don't mean to be at all pessimistic here, but think about this. From birth to death, what is life? It's a series of things that we have to give up. Let me make my case. Right. And in fact, this was a case made uh, by a gentleman by the name of Dr. Scott Peck, in a book I know you and I both admire mm -hmm. called The Road Less Traveled. Right. And one of the things that Dr. Peck talked about in there was that we don't teach our children the process of grieving. And he says we need to do that because from birth to death, life is a series of things that we have to give up. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, we have to give up being in the womb. That's right. Where all of our needs are taken care of, and then a horrible thing happens. We're born. And that's and pretty stark. When that's we pretty stark yeah. at first. <laughs> we have to give up being two and three where the world revolves mm -hmm. around us because we're so doggone cute. Look at cute little Ernie. Yeah. And then he is not cute anymore when he's four or five. He's just obnoxious. Yeah. <laughs> and we have to give up, uh, you know, that idea of being little kings and queens at two and three. We have to give up uh, the agility of our youth. We have to give up, uh, you know, when we're teens, if you can imagine it, if you can dream it, I can do it. Right? And then we go out on our own. Then we'll go out on our own and maybe and look, come face to face with, well, you know. How hard that is. It, that's hard. We may have to give up the, um, you know, in our uh, late teen years, um, the um, agility that comes with our late teens and 20s. Um, maybe as we age a bit, we give up, um, you know, relation, various and sundry relationships. We leave high school, we leave colleges, we leave workplaces, we leave be, relationships. And those can be secure. So I give up that security. That's correct. And it's like, it can be a little scary sometimes. And ultimately, uh, as we age, we give up some other things, physical agilities, maybe knees don't work as well, hips don't work as well, mm -hmm. other joints don't work as well, um, other items on our bodies don't work as well. Uh, I mean, getting whole, old is hard. It is, it is not for sissies, no. is it? No. And ultimately, uh, in a normal life, we have to give up life itself. Yes. Uh, and along the way, there are some things that, as you said earlier, we usually think of grief as 
big things. There, there are those big bad things along the way that we have to give up to. Uh, but from birth to death, life is a series of things that um, we give up. Now, we can choose to be pessimistic about that, but we don't have to be, do no. we? No, we can be very positive about it because there's a lot to learn. Yeah. You know, I like uh, Wayne Dyer, he talks about everything's an opportunity. Yes. So, yes. It's like, you know, so how can I use that? Yeah. You know, yeah. how can this be something I learn from? Yeah. And grow from and yeah. not something that puts me down. Yeah. So it's, yeah. But I have to stay aware of that, don't I? Yes. And yeah. it's really hard to do sometimes. Yeah. 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 Particularly as we're moving through those areas that might sometimes be big and bad. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe even some of um, what is what people come to see us as counselors about sometimes is, is maybe an accumulation of not just the big and bad, but also not grieving along the way. Yeah. yeah. We let things build up and it becomes like a big dam that we're, we're holding all this water back. Yeah. yeah. That's, a, that's a good analogy. Yeah. And, and I might need to let the damn thing go. That's right. <laughs> But that's scary, too, because yeah, yeah, then yes. I, I don't know if I can stop it. But, you know. but how, much, how much of, and I, this is a hypothetical question, I, I, you know, I'm not expecting anything, maybe except a discussion here, but hypothetically, how much of diagnosable depression, clinical depression, what we would call clinical depression, are severe levels, moderate to severe levels of anxiety, which, you know, we can do other programs about, but let's just agree for, we, I think we can all agree for now, depression and anxiety in our society is at proportions pretty high that we've never seen before. Some, some people might even say epidemic mm -hmm. proportions of anxiety and depression. Just if you look at the amount of medications written every month for anxiety and depression, then you know certainly we can agree it's a problem. So how much of this is just this big accumulation of stuff not grieved properly? Oh, and I think it's very possible that that's a lot. What a lot of our depression is about, our anxiety. Yeah. Like it because I don't deal with it. Yeah, I don't want to let it in. I don't want to let it out. Yeah. So it's like, how do I acknowledge it and be okay with it? You know, it's like the the Buddha has talked about. Uh, and for those of you who've done anything with uh, Buddhism, you know that uh, suffering is a big item that they emphasize. And yes. So how do we? Yeah. How do we? If we're suffering all the time, how do we deal with that? I yeah. mean, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Tremendous challenge. You know, Scott Peck, uh, at the beginning of that book we were mentioning just a moment ago, I was mentioning just a moment ago, uh, the very first line kind of in a sense, really that first paragraph of, uh, of the book really kind of has a Buddhist feel to it. Uh, very first sentence in the book, life is difficult. Yeah. This is a great truth. And in fact, I think he pulled that and references the four, the four noble truths Truth. of Buddhism, uh -huh. one of which is life is suffering. But then he goes on to say, um, you know, most of us don't really grasp that. I'm paraphrasing now. Most of us don't really see it. Once we really mm -hmm. see it and embrace it, we can transcend it. Yeah, and, and uh, Eckhart Tolle, I like him. He talks about too. just, yeah. you know, how do we stay aware? Yes. Be aware of what's going on inside and in our environment. Yeah, I love that he, uh, you know, uh, labels something called the pain body. But yeah. Which, you know, maybe helps us to distinguish that from separate from us and separate from our normal thinking. Yeah. 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 And so uh, when, when we're dealing with good grief, when we're dealing with all kinds of grief, um, 
you know, we, we talk about stages of grieving, how to grieve. Are those stages helpful if we're going to uh, look at dealing with uh, life as a series of things that we have to give up? Good grief, if you will. I think it's helpful just knowing that it's normal to have, like, to, 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 to not deny. I'm going right. to deny things. That right. Something's happening. I'm going to have some shock with when, a, you know, I was telling you earlier, you know, I, I was in a relationship for four months and suddenly it ended. It's like, wow. It's yeah. like, I yeah. just got a letter about yeah. it. And it's yeah. like, it's a shock. Yeah. You know, and I, that, don't, I yeah. don't even want to admit that it's over. Yeah. You know, so and there's denial. Denial. Yeah. Was shock. So, so there's, there's a couple of those stages of grieving, the, the shock. And to know that that's denial. normal. Yes. See, and yes. to not start shaming myself or beating myself right. up about feeling that way right. because it's it's hard and know, then and the it. you know then follow following those stages and we'll talk after break a little bit about you know and, and flesh out all of them but the stages after shock and denial bargaining and denial would be um, anger, anger and yeah. depression mm -hmm. and finally acceptance yeah. we'll talk about those but yeah. let's take a break and we'll come back we're talking about good grief today here on Strategies for Living. Our life strategist is Dr. Ernie Calger, and we will come back. Please come back with us. Treating your asbestos disease means spending lots of time with doctors. Understand what they're saying with the free pocket-sized asbestos disease glossary that explains all the medical terms and the roles of the mesothelioma and lung cancer specialists involved in your care. Also, learn how to best pay for your significant medical expenses. Call Asbestos Lifeline today at 800-990-1650 or visit asbestoslifeline.com. The best cancer care starts with the best cancer information. Cancer.net, the award-winning patient information website of the American Society of Clinical Oncology, empowers patients, families, and caregivers by providing timely, oncologist-approved information and resources right at their fingertips. Cancer.net offers comprehensive information on more than 120 types of cancer, side effects, coping, caregiving, clinical trials, and much more. Cancer.net also features a blog, videos, podcasts, and a mobile app. The site is designed to help people with cancer better understand the disease, from diagnosis and treatment through survivorship. You could just rely on Cancer.net. It has very accurate information that can give you hope. It's been a great, great resource. For more information, visit Cancer.net and find us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Cancer.net is supported by the Conquer Cancer Foundation. For years, hackers have used pirated content as a lure to expose consumers to malware. Rogue entertainment boxes used to illegally access pirated movies and TV shows can put you at risk, but you can protect yourself. Criminals use trickery to enter into consumers' homes, explained Tom Galvin, executive director of the Digital Citizens Alliance, DCA. The enticement of free movies and television shows on products without a reputable company behind them, he added, creates a fertile ground for malware to spread. If it seems too good to be true, it probably is. DCA investigated these devices and found malware on them that stole usernames and passwords, probed user networks, and uploaded user data without consent. Most consumers are unaware of the security risks of plugging one of these devices into a home network. For your cyber safety, keep an eye on the devices that are brought into your home, including by your children. The lure of free pirated content can be tempting, but there is a price. To help kids succeed as adults, it pays for parents to teach them about money early. People who learned about money as children were more likely to have a higher income as adults than those who didn't. But parents today don't go about it the way their parents did, a survey by Quicken, maker of best-selling personal finance software, revealed. Modern moms and dads are more likely to teach their kids about charitable giving, more likely to use credit cards to explain finance, and much more likely to discuss investing. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back into Strategies for Living. You are watching Strategies for Living, obviously. This is the television version, but did you know there's a radio version that goes uh, 
every evening on News Radio 710 Kiel and 1017 FM. It is your daily dose of radio rehab, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. every weekday evening, Monday through Friday, and on Sundays between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. And you can uh, find that on 710 AM, 1017 FM, or you can download the Kiel app. And, uh, or you can watch it on Facebook Live, Strategies for Living. Welcome back into the TV version. Dr. Ernie Calger is talking about good grief, good grief. Today, today. Okay, so we usually think about those things that are big and bad, uh, and we usually think about that as what we need to grieve. But we're establishing today that, well, wait a minute. Um, really, if we're going to live a healthy life, we got to learn to grieve and I've grieve all the time. I've got this going on every day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe even day. maybe even every hour. Yeah, huh? sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, then, how do we? Is is the, is the first step really tuning into it, Ernie? Is the first step kind of a an awareness of? Um, well, I, I wonder how much of how I might be feeling, especially if I'm feeling really down, you know, maybe even to the point of, mm -hmm. am I depressed? Am I anxious? Do I need to look at losses in my life? Oh, I think so. What we would maybe call even very normal, normal losses. losses. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah. pain. Yeah. Physical and yeah. emotional pain that we have. Just yeah. From yeah feeling hurt from what someone said. Yeah. I mean, just yeah. a comment. Someone yeah. did, or they ignored me, or they, you know, it's like someone didn't call, and they said they were going to call. So. These the stages of grief, and we, we started them last segment, so bargaining and deni denial, denial. Uh, bargaining, uh, shock, yeah. uh, all of that could kind of be grouped together. But when I kind of get through with that, a lot of times, anger, anger. will kick in. Um, See, and I, you know, and some people say, along with anger, we have hurt. Yeah. So if I'm yeah. going to be hurting, you know, that's going to be something to that I can grieve about. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's like that that the hurt. It's yeah. Like, my gosh, who of us like that? Who? We don't volunteer for that usually. Right. You know? Right. And yeah. I'm even going to wonder out loud. You know, um, that it's been said that depression is anger turned in. Turned in. Yeah. And so we've already said, and again, we'll talk in future shows about the um, epidemic proportions of depression and anxiety that we're dealing with today. But we know we're dealing with it. So how much of that is we don't know what, you know, in the grieving process, which is very normal because life for every single one of us is a series of things we have to give up. How much of depression is, well, we don't know that we should be grieving. We ought to be grieving all along. All along. So we take a lot of this anger because we can't be angry forever, right? No, correct. And we turn it on the inside. Yeah. I wonder how much of this epidemic that oh, we've got going on. Tremendous is amount. This. Yeah. yeah. You know, and then we and we get into then little ways that we try to cope with it on our own, and we get into, you know, I get angry at people. Mm -hmm. You know, lash lash out. It kind of it you. kind of oozes yeah. out. You know? yeah. yeah. And then also we get, some of us turn to alcohol and drugs, and. Look at that epidemic yeah. that we have yeah. for the drugs right now. Yeah. 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 I had a 14-year-old young man this morning who, uh, he said, I, I don't want you to tell my mom and dad, but he said, a lot of times I'll take out stuff that happens at school on them. I want you to tell them <laughs> that I realize it. <laughs> I mean, but, unfortunately, we do that all the time yeah, with our loved yeah. ones. You know, they become the person... The, the ones that we lash out at. And I, I shared with him, I said, that's, that's very insightful mm -hmm. for a 14-year-old young man yeah. to be aware. Oh, okay, well, I'm, you know, mm -hmm. 
to me, um, that shows great hope. Yeah. You know, and and actually, this young man asked to come see a counselor. And that's great. And isn't that's it? great, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. You don't see many. 14 year old no. guy and this guy's he's a he's a he's an athlete and he's you know uh, kind of a macho kind of guy uh, um, and so you know things like that give me a lot of hope yeah 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 and that's one thing that can help us you know and that can be something else that we go into later date about how different coping mechanisms and what can help us get through things and you know and have hope because it's so important that we are hopeful. It, it, it is, Ernie, and it's not a, a one-size-fits-all. That's kind of a personal thing that we have to figure out. Okay, well, what can, what can be the things that you can do? What kind of things c that I can do to engender and sustain hope in my life, no matter what else is going on? Well, and some of the bigger things seem out of our control. I mean, look at what's happening nationally and statewide, you know, and, and <laughs> yeah. I, I don't have any control about it. Yeah. It's like, yeah. I, so how do I deal with that? Yeah. Well, well, I, I might, uh, one of the things that I might do is uh, make sure that I give myself breaks in my, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there's a, I think there's more than a few of us that can kind of be addicted to CNN or Fox oh, or right. MSNBC Jeez. or whatever we might, and it it kind of that that you know that can kind of be um, that drama. So I watch that it too much. Drama yeah. can be can really mm -hmm. hook us. Yeah, and we begin to feel, feel it. it. We oh, begin to God. feel that this, that sense of negativity. You know, little despair sometimes. Yeah. It's like, yeah. well, what can yeah. we do? Yeah, can we do anything? Yeah. We can realize that we have, um, you know, we, we, we can realize that we might not be able to change the world, but I can always change my mind about the world. You know, so one of the things I might do is just say, well, you know, maybe I need to take some breaks from, you know, my news consumption. And get into some things that are a little more positive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's like, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, and whatever that might be for you, maybe yeah. it's reading, maybe it's music, music. maybe it's going to church, yeah. maybe it's exercise, getting Just, out for a jog, yeah, maybe walking. it's walking the dog. That's right. You know? Petting the dog. Petting the dog. Holding yeah. the cat or the dog. Exactly. Uh, it's yeah. not a one size fits all. No. But I think you've, you've, you've said it very succinctly that uh, hope is something that we don't ever want to give up on. No. Yeah. But we also want to realize that uh, even though we might think sometimes, well, grief is all of the big stuff. It's the big and bad stuff. Not necessarily. It's all of the small stuff, too. All the small stuff. Ernie, thank you for coming. You're and, welcome. You know, the, w what I forget until we start to have a conversation like this is how quick the time goes. Oh, it does, yeah. doesn't it? You're going to have to come back okay. and visit us. Maybe the next time you come back, we'll, okay. we'll be more hopeful. We'll yeah. talk about hope. Well, that'd be good. All right. Thank yeah. you for coming today. You're welcome. Folks, thank you for coming today and being a part of Strategies for Living, the television version. And you've been watching. Thank you for that. But also know that you can listen to Strategies for Living each and every day. 101.7 FM and 710 Keel. Monday through Friday evenings, 7.05 to 8, and on Sunday mornings, 9.05 to 10. For Dr. Ernie Calger, I'm marriage and family therapist David McMillan. See you next time here on Strategies for Living.